Howdy folks, Moose here. How you doing? Hey, it's been a few years since I have done a sensor cleaning video. And I thought it's time to update, especially with mirrorless, the Z6 and the Z7, and some of the questions that cleaning its sensor brings up. Now, first thing, the disclaimer. This system you're about to see is only how I do it. It's not recommended by anybody else but me. It's just the way I maintain my sensors. So, you guys are all photographers, you're all smart. It's up to you to decide whether you want to do this or not do this. It is totally up to you. So, disclaimer, this is Moose's system, how I do it. No more, no less. So the basics, first and foremost. The actual place you're going to clean your gear. A lot of people like to, like, when they're traveling, will do it, for example, on their bed or in their hotel. Or they'll put out a, a nice white clean cloth, thinking that that will help the process. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. You want something that is dust-free, lint-free, that you can work on. So particulate matters are not falling into that sensor during or after the process. And that's one of the kind of the issues of dealing with cleaning sensors is dust is constantly going to get in there. No way around it. Uh, if you do, for example, a air to air photo mission, you've got all this air going whizzing by this camera. And most of that dust that's in there is literally the dry skin from your hand that's blowing off. So it's kind of in, in a way a no win situation. We're just trying to minimize how much time and post we have to have to clean up dust spots and trying to avoid that one dust spot that hits right in the most horrible place in a subject where cleaning it up is really difficult. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do when I get ready to clean is I'm going to take my blower brush and I'm actually going to blow off everything. The surface I'm working on, the camera bodies, and then I'm going to go wash my hands. And they're actually going to be a little bit damp. Okay, I'm going to dry them off. But the idea being that dry skin isn't falling into the camera. It happens. I mean, that's just part of the process. So that's the first thing. Then I'm going to take my loop. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to look. Now, it's hard to tell. But you can see the loop itself has got dust sparkles on it. Can't help but do it. So I'm going to sit there and away from the cameras. I'm going to blow them out. So they're as clean as possible. And of course, dust isn't falling from this down to there. What's that tape for? It's so the switch doesn't get knocked while I travel and the battery doesn't go dead. I do carry a spare battery for that reason, but that's what the tape is there for. So I'm gonna clean this out. So when I go like that, more dust isn't going down into that sensor. Kind of common sense, but typically when we're cleaning our gear, we're in a hurry. And when we're in a hurry, we tend to forget the common sense things. So that's the next thing I do is blow that off. Now, personally, on my camera, in my menu system, I have clean sensor, okay? And lock mirror up for cleaning. So you have to make sure your battery fully charged. I'm gonna use that, toggle over, hit start. Now it's open. I'm going to take my sensor, my sensor loop, and I'm going to sit there and look at that sensor. Now, for myself, I have to put on reading glasses. I cannot just look at that loop without them. And now I sit there and I actually move the loop around. It's not just there. I move it around and look at all the spots, especially the corners. First thing I'm going to determine is uh, what's on there. If it's not dirty, I'm done. I don't clean it just because I'm here. I check it and I'm out of here if it's clean. Next, okay, if there are spots, I'm gonna sit there and take the brush. I'm gonna turn the camera upside down just to get the cat gravity to work for me. I'm gonna blow that out. Now after that, I check it, I look again. Now if I see stuff in here, okay, what am I gonna do? I'm going to sit there and I'm going to have to do a wet solution. 
So I keep that there. That's there because dust will be coming in. Now, if I'm gonna do a wet solution, I'm gonna sit there and make sure I do this for sure before I do a wet solution. That's because there's any particles on that sensor that could be abrasive, and that happens. You know, anything from, uh, the most common is, you put your lens on your camera in a hurry, and the first time you put it on there, you don't have it totally flush, a little cockeyed, so it doesn't go on right. Well, that causes little shaving particles to get on there. Those could scratch your sensor. So you want to sit there and blow it off as best as possible. Then, here's my kit, this is my travel kit. Because I'm doing a full frame FX camera, okay, I'm gonna get out not the small wipes that I'd use on a smaller camera like a D500. I'm gonna get out the big wipe that I use on the FX. See the difference, FX and DX. Then I'm gonna get out my fluid and I'm just using the small portable Eclipse. So these are vis visible dust swabs, and this is a small bottle of Eclipse. So that's what I'm gonna use. Now, I kinda do this kind of in a sort of a ritual, in that I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna take this wrapper and I'm gonna carefully keep it. I, I don't just throw it away right off the bat. And that's gonna be set on there. Take out my fluid and I'm gonna sit there and put on a couple drops. And you can slowly see a line of darkness. Then I sit there and I flick it, hold it up vertical and I flick it. Now when I put it in the mirror box, I'm not gonna put it in so hard, and this is just an example here, okay? I'm not gonna put it so hard that I'm bending this at all. In fact, I'm gonna barely touch, I'm gonna barely touch when I go across. Barely touch. And then I'm gonna go across again. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. So I'm not bending this down, I'm not pushing hard, okay? It's, it's barely setting it on here, going across, and going across. And that's it. And that's what I'm gonna to do to clean the sensor. Then I'm gonna take the sensor loop and check again. And I'm gonna move this around. Now the important thing is to check the four corners. That seems to be the biggest problem with this, is the, the four corners. You can get everything from little residue from the Eclipse to have pushed particles in the corners and not get them. So you wanna check that very carefully. Now, when I go to use the wet solution to clean that sensor. The room itself is not gonna be cold. The air conditioner is not gonna be running. In fact, I'm gonna to try to get the room to be almost, uh, you could say, in the 65 to 70 range of temperature because this fluid will evaporate better off of there and quicker when that's the scenario. When you have more humidity in a colder room, that fluid will not sit there and evaporate as quickly as you'd want. And that's when you get that residue left on the sensor. So to repeat this, take the swab. I'm gonna put a couple drops on here, boink, boink, boink. And you can start seeing a little line of moisture, maybe an eighth of an inch long. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold it vertically and I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna go like that. Forces the fluid to even out across that edge. I'm not gonna jam this down on the, mat, the mirror box. I'm gonna lightly go across, then lightly go across. You can see there's barely any fluid on that black. You can see how quickly it evaporates. That's what you want, okay? I mean, if you have sneezed on that sensor, I'd send that in. If this is just general stuff that's stuck on there, this simple process is all it takes. And that's what I do. Then when I'm done, close the mirror, and then I make sure that I carefully put the cap back on. And before that cap goes on, right, because it's plastic, blow that puppy out. I'm always surprised how people sit there and they, they get this. They put this in their pocket, and this is plastic, and you're 
clothes are full of lint, they just take this and they put it right on there. I mean, where do you think that dust is coming from? So that's the basic process for doing a camera like a D5, D850 that has a mirror box. You have to put the, the mirror up to clean. Now let's switch over to the Z, okay? Now this has brought up a lot of questions with people and they're asking, how do you do this? Because the instruction book clearly states, don't do what I'm about to show you. All right, so again, disclaimer, if you're doing this, understand you're taking a risk because you're doing exactly what the instruction book says not to do. This is what Moose is doing, okay? So only I'm, you know, this is how I'm doing my cameras. It's up to you whether you can do your own. Now, first thing is the instruction book says is no power can be going to the sensor because of the five-point gimbal, which is a marvelous system. And I don't want to damage it. So no power does not mean just turn this off. This doesn't mean that to me. No power means literally no power, okay? Now, there's no power in the system. In fact, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna hold this down for a few seconds to make sure any residual power that might be in the system is bled off, so there's literally no power. And in theory, okay, in theory, That is now parked, all right? Can't hurt the gimbal. Now here's the first challenge. This sensor loop is made for this camera. It doesn't really fit on this camera. Uh, I'm kind of cheap. It still works, so I did not go out and buy something special for this camera. What I have to do is just kind of this, this little dance. I have to sit there and move this back and forth, again, wearing my glasses, till it's in focus. And once it's in focus, I'll move it around to check the entire sensor. Now, the one thing is, that's kind of cool about this process is that you don't have to go into a menu system to raise the mirror because it is uh, mirrorless. So the sensor is right there. This swab goes away. I get out a new swab, okay? And just for this discussion, I'm gonna sit there and say that I am taking out a new swab. You know, they're three bucks a piece. I'm not gonna sit there and blow another one off. So, ta-da, a clean swab. Now here's the problem. This will fit on here. You wanna sit there and keep that clean, okay? So the process is basically the same. Here's a new swab, I've got it out. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna blow it. Again, don't want any particles on there that could possibly scratch that sensor when I use a wet solution. This is gonna be a cap that's gonna sit there and keep dust from falling in there. That's why the surface is not a towel or a bedspread. It's something that is not throwing up lint. Once again, I'm gonna use the same full size swab as I did for the D5 or D850. Take my clips. Again, I'm gonna put on the drops. Don't you can see it wet for about eighth of an inch. I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna flick it, hold it vertical so the fluid evens out and goes down through gravity. And then again, I'm gonna go in here, hit that sensor one way, then another way. I am not gonna sit there and push down hard. It's gonna be gentle, just like before. Gentle across, gentle away. And then I'm gonna check that. That's it, it's real simple. Now, this swabbing action in the Z is a whole lot easier than in the D5, because the D5, you have such a very limited amount of angle you can use that brush in. Where the Z, you have this big angle you can go across and go through, and that makes it cleaning so much simpler. The key is no power to that sensor. And again, once I'm done, I'm gonna sit there and blow off this plastic. Ooh, you can see that big old piece of lint that was in there. I'm gonna blow that out, put that on, Make sure my light's off, tape on my switch, and I'm done. Now, if you find yourself using multiple swabs to clean your sensor, there's two possible reasons. One, you're putting way too much of this on here, okay? And then you're not letting it sit there and even out and flow down. Number two, you're pushing too hard. Okay, if you push too hard, 
you're going to leave streaks, okay? There's no way around it. So you want to make sure you're not pushing hard, you have the right amount of fluid, and of course the ambient air temperature can make a huge difference as well. So that's how I'm cleaning my gear in 2019. Again, this is just how Moose does it. Not rec recommended by anybody else, it's up to you whether you actually want to use this system or not. I'm just reporting to you and showing you the way that I keep my sensors clean. Hope that helps. See you out in the field.